Hi folks, who wants to go to the moon? This is such an awesome art. And for those of you that have followed the channel closely, you might have noticed that that intro footage you just saw uh, was our UMC 750, which we have since replaced with a UMC 500. And that's because all of this footage is almost three years old. Uh, I got a phone call out of the blue from a gentleman who said, hey, would you like to help us make a part for this Iris rover? It's the first micro rover, and it was scheduled to launch for the moon a while back. That has been pushed to hopefully, knock on wood, May the 4th of this year. Pretty cool that it's on May the 4th. This is the story of that part and hopefully bringing some awareness to all of the wonderful folks and students uh, that have contributed to making this rover a reality. And how cool is it to think that a part here is going to be up living on the moon? We've had a ton of fun over the years making parts for various different rover replicas. Uh, a number of the ones were for Beatty Robotics and some of those ended up in museums. And then we got a phone call and we're able to, uh, along with so many other uh, folks out there that are absolutely incredible makers, participate in Project Egress, making an Apollo 11 replica uh, command module door that is in the Smithsonian and still on display to this day, which is super cool. But this one takes the cake because this is an actual part that's going to the moon. Most of the takeaways for this part are come not only to the five axis cam, but to the work holding. And it really is the beauty of having five axis uh, machine at your disposal. It gives us the ability to do a bunch of things you just don't have the benefit to uh, with a three axis or even a four axis machine. It gives us the ability to work the part. We can machine some from one side, machine from the other side, and, and go back and forth. It also gives us the ability to make the quantity we needed. Only one part is fine, but we had to make six so that they could send them out for various different testing uh, and analysis and so forth. It's also fun to see how far Fusion has come in its capabilities with five axis tool paths, especially with some of the new Stephen Shallow, as well as more recently the integration of module works tool paths into Fusion. We're now hosting a two day hands on five axis CNC class. So if you want to come here this angel and spend time machining, programming, a five axis part, uh, link in the video description where you can sign up for those classes. The other last thing that was really helpful on this part that we had not really had to take advantage of before when making five axis parts is tipping your B axis past 90 degrees. The way to hold this part and the way we wanted to have surfaces presented to the tool, it really was helpful to have that rotation past 90, but it also raises the importance of having really good machine simulation. It's even better in Fusion now than it was then, as well as having the right work holding. You know, we wanted to hold the part up far enough away from the platter so that we didn't have to have too long of a stick out or gauge length on our tool. Frankly, the UMC 500 that we have now would be a better machine for this part than a relatively large 750, but we made it work. But the coolest thing for this making this was the hot glue technique. In the video here, we're using a corded hot glue gun. We have since replaced that with a cordless one. This is absolutely great. It's just the handiest thing to have is a cordless tool. And it's not a complicated trick. We're window machining the part. We're leaving a, per, a full periphery around the part. Then we start to tab it out. And then as those tabs weaken the link between the raw material and the finished part, we start using that hot glue to hold the part in place. And that lets us truly create an absolutely perfectly finished part in one setup, including all machine faces that are also the bird. Yeah, you have to program either stops or different programs or pauses in your program so that you can go in there and add that hot glue. But it's a trade-off that's well worth it to get this part done in one operation. So again, thanks to the shout out to the team uh, behind the Iris Rover. We're happy to be ever so small a part of it. Best of luck on your launch day. And again, folks that are watching, please go get some attention to this. That's what we need in the world is getting more and more folks excited and, and pursuing engineering, science and machining careers around stuff like this. As always though, take care. See you soon.